guitar players who have these really amazing amps that you can't ever really play to their full potential because uh, they might be non-master volume amps, they might be old ass amps that you can't crank up. And you're wondering, how do you get the most out of that amp? Uh, it is the Power Station by Fryette. Now, I have reviewed the Power Station 100 by Fryette. I haven't just reviewed it. It's right. <laughs> you can't see it. It's right under this two notes thing right there. Um, yeah, right there. Right there is the, my Power Station 100, um, which I use to pump my amps into the uh, Tone King cab when I actually want to work with the cab. I am an old fart. I'm 46. Yes, I am. I know I look like 12, but I cannot handle super loud volumes. I will get tinnitus. It's bad. I will not risk anything. But when you have a non-master volume amp, like a plexi kind of a thing, like the... Uh, uh, MVP 66, which has a semi kind of master volume, but an old style amp, you need to crank them. And any amp, realistically, you need to crank it to a volume where it works and sounds good. No tube amp is ever quiet or ever sounds good quiet, which is where the power station comes in. It is an attenuator. It makes your amp quieter. But a lot of attenuators can be passive, meaning they don't even need power. They just make your amp quieter. Works, work, they work with the amp's power and uh, put less of it into the cab. Now the power station has a full tube amp inside. And the benefit of that is that you can also make quiet amps louder. It's completely up to you whether you tame your big beast or make a beast out of your tame amp. Ah, see what I did there. Now if you wanna know everything about the history of it and why and how Stephen Fryett came up with it, I have a full interview with him about the power station coming out a day after this. So it should already be on the channel if it's not today for you. If it's tomorrow for you, then you can watch it. So why have a tube power amp in an attenuator? Well, a couple of different reasons. First of all, it also makes it a tube power amp. Can it attenuate? Yes. But can you also use it as a two power amp for your synergy system. Yes, you can. For your Line 6 Helix, please watch my Power Station 100 video. We're not going to do this in this video, uh, but in the 100 video, you can hear the Helix with a cap and a two power amp, and it changes the Helix ridiculously. Any modeler benefits tremendously from a two power amp, which this is with 50 watts. Uh, but let's talk about the biggest Reason. So reason number one, why you want to attenuate it, you want to make it quiet. But does the thing that your amp now sees, which is this. So your amp goes into this and this goes into the speaker. With a normal attenuator, attenuators are, if they're good ones, reactive loads. Meaning that interplay between the speaker and the tubes in the power uh, amp of your, of your amplifier is simulated by the reactive load of the attenuator. And that means that your amp still behaves like it's supposed to. Your amp sees a cab in the form of the reactive load. A resistive load would uh, not feel like, an, like a cab to your amp, which is all great. That means any reactive load like the Captor X has, the Amp Central from Red 7, and so many attenuators on the market. Uh, that's a good thing. On the Boss uh, Waza 2 Amp Expander, you can even tweak the reactive load. All good. Your amp sees what it's supposed to see. But if you're still using a cab, does your cab react to tubes? No, it doesn't. Because your cab is seeing the attenuator. And your cab is not doing what a cab normally does. And it's pretty important if you're going to have a reactive load for your amp to see what the cab's doing. Well, what about the cab? The cab needs to see an amplifier. It needs to react to the aliveness of the tubes. And that is what the power station does. It mimics the cab to the amp, so your amp's fine. And it mimics the amp to the cab, so your cab's fine. So you're putting this in the middle with tubes and the reactive load, and both parties are still partying, if you know what I mean. So, 
right here on this side is where you tweak the reactive loadiness. You can say it's flat, it's warm, deep, and then the top end, either it's flat or bright and edge. And you'll find your favorite way that you want it, uh, that you want your amp to see this. That's what this is. And then you have a low and high to adjust to the level of your amp. And then this is how loud you want it, okay? This is the presence and the depth of the power amp. Again, you can use this as a power amp in the back. We actually have a line input right here. And I can put, again, my Synergy system in there. I can put a Helix in there. I can put a Walrus Audio ACS-1 into that. A Strymon Iridium, any kind of preamp, um, I can load into this. There is a something out, a line out with a level that I can tweak. This is an effects loop. And right now I have the ultra tap from Eventide in that effects loop. Now, why does that make sense? Well, that means you can put effects like a flanger or a phaser like Van Halen did. Van Halen attenuated his amps and put a phaser behind it. Also something variac. I don't know what that is. Something, uh, a word. It's difficult with a plexi when you're really cranking it up to put a delay in front of it, especially a digital delay, digital delay, because it's just going to be compressed and muddied up and it's not the same thing. So how do you put a digital delay behind your cranked classic amp? Well, in a production environment, it's easy. You just put it in, in, uh, uh, it, into software or whatever, or you wire it into your audio interface, not a problem. In a live environment, you can't. So we are attenuating our classic amp in this. We'll take the line level into the ultra tap and then this is going back into the tube power amp which is then going into my cab so yes with your classic plexi or whatever i can all of a sudden take my tape delay which is behind me that echo fix right right there that blue thing you see the corner there uh i could take that into the effects loop and actually run that behind my amp put it into a cab and still mic my cab you can run balanced out of this. It is not speaker compensated. It's not a, it's not a simulation of a cap. It is literally taking that level into your door. You could take this into a two notes capped, uh, uh, cap M into any kind of impulse response loader. You could take it into your audio interface and then into your door where you then can put an impulse response on it. This does not have speaker simulation. The main idea of this is attenuator and power amp still work with the real cab live and mic that but at manageable volumes you cannot run a jcm800 or a plexi in a small club with this you can by the way this is also rack mountable you can get rack ears for this one of my gripes with this version which the 100 watt has is that the effects loop is not switchable I wish it was. The other one has a foot switch and you can switch the effects loop. The 100 also has two channels, so you can have two different volumes, two different settings for presence and depth. Also, it's 100 watts. This is 50. It's also different tubes. This is the tubes that I'm writing right here. And the 100 is the tubes that I'm writing right here. I should know this, but I forgot. And that's how I am. So you can turn this off. And now it's not attenuating at all. It's just pumping the amp straight into the cap. I'm going to be careful with that. Um, then, OK, we got the balanced out. Uh, then we have the amp in. You can switch it right here to different ohmages. And then there's a speaker out and a second speaker out. This is on the 100 where you have the foot switch input. So, but here they opted for two speaker outs and then there's a ground lift. And that's pretty much the whole deal. We're going to take the Tone King 40 watt Sky King into this. I'm going to turn it off and show you how loud the Sky King is naturally. too loud for me to comfortably 
played in the room. So, fully attenuated, but cranking the internal power amp up, I get about the same volume as I get with a Sky King. What you have to know is, it's important. If you take a 1 watt amp, which we've done in the 100 watt video in the PS100, please watch that, it's important. If you want a very small 1 watt or 5 watt amp to be extremely loud and at stadium level. It can't really do that because it is converting the level that it gets in into a line level and it then amplifies that line level. The line level it creates with a one watt amp isn't very high, meaning it can absolutely make your one watt amp gigable. It can't make it into a hundred watt behemoth. That's just something to note. Okay, so, but we want to make it quieter. All of a sudden it's manageable. Let's find out. So I'm on high input now. We're going to go to low input, which will make it quite a bit louder. So my 40 watt amp can actually get louder. That is how you adjust to your amp. When we get to the 100 watts, we definitely want that button in. Uh, so let's check. We're right now on flat on the reactive load. We're going to go and see what happens. that definitely adds warmth. It says warm and that's exactly what it does. Well, talent doesn't come with it. Um, I like the deep setting. Let's go into the top end. That's got a spike! That should be called spike, not bright, but nice. Ah, that's a lot. I mean, of course, with that cap, which is a Synergy 212, by the way. Hey, ultra tap behind my amp. can easily dial that to any volume you want and remember you can also take an amp that's quieter and make it louder so for a live situation it doesn't matter really what you, what amp you have you will get it to the volume that you need and you this is the, the great thing you dial in the amp exactly where it sounds right because sometimes the master volume on the amp isn't just volume it is sound it is saturation it is sag it is depth that is how the amp sounds best but that volume might be too low. That might that volume might be way too high. Dial in the amp perfectly and then use this to get it to the volume where it needs to be. It makes sense. Also put effects behind it. Um, I'm going to go back to flat because the combination of what I'm using right now, I like that more for the top end. We're going to go into the uh, Red 7 Duality 100 for some 
classic rock stuff. That's kind of cool though, with that effect. Just a quick, uh, I actually think that the um, balanced out doesn't have the effects in it. What we're qu quickly going to do, and that's going to sound pretty bad because it's a DI signal, I'm going to record that balanced out. Yeah, I mean, obviously we, you would have to put an IR on there just to let you see that uh, it's actually working. <laughs> And so on. Uh, it's not something, it's not for me the primary use of this, uh, but it obviously works if you then use software or an IR loader in uh, standalone. There's an angle um, uh, cap loader thing. There, there's a whole bunch of products on the market. Let's do a different amp. Let's go to the Soldano. Why not? I'm in the Soldano SLO 100. That's a loud ass amp, and we're taming it. And we're putting cool stuff behind it. Non master boy me MVP sixty six. That amp does not have. An effects loop. An, 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 it doesn't have an, an effects loop. Now it has an effects loop. flat nine scale you figured that out uh what about the big kahuna the jcm 800 again nothing in the effects loop and we've got effects <laughs> a huge fan of the power station. I never believed hype, but when you play it, that cab feels exactly like it should with an amp on it. It is as if this thing isn't there, but it is volume controllable. It's also very clearly 
totally controllable. I love the simplicity of the tweakable uh, reactive load. And I love the fact that you can take a model and make it loud, that I can amplify anything I really want to with the line in. Uh, I love the fact that it has an effects loop, which really expands the possibilities of a bunch of amps. I don't like the fact that it isn't switchable on this. I'd rather have a look, watch my video with Steven. We're discussing that and I'm getting on his nerves about that, but that's my job. Price wise, this isn't too far away from the 100. I don't think that price is what determines whether you get the 100 or the 50. Uh, tube selection might be, and do you need two speaker outputs? Do you need a one speaker output, but switchable effects loop? Do you need the two different channels, meaning two different volumes? Oh, we never looked at the presence and the depth. Should we do that? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Well, they do exactly what they're supposed to do uh, in a subtle way as they usually do on a power amp. So yeah, it says it, it does what it says on the tin. Again, price point isn't uh, uh, ultra affordable, but don't see it as an attenuator. See it as a tube power amp. Tube power amps frequently run you more than this. So it is a tube power amp. It is an attenuator. It is an effects loopy thing. And it also has a balanced out that you can later tweak with IRs. Do you go for the 100 with the two channels and the switchable effects loop or do you go for the 50 with the two speaker outs and the one channel, which is probably enough for a lot of situations? I can't tell you that. You have to know price wise, they're not too far apart. So I don't think that you're going to go for the 50 to save a couple of bucks if you're already shelling over that much money. I am converted. I always thought this much money for an attenuator, but it isn't just an attenuator. It comes handy in a lot of situations. And when you're playing with a real cab, not just DI and headphones and monitors and all that stuff, I absolutely think that there is no equal to the Freyet power station. That's all I can say. I am being paid to make this video. I'm not being paid to say this. Steven's a nice guy, but he can't buy my opinion. Fuck you, Steven. I mean, from, from the heart, you know. You know. Um, fuck you from the heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, he, we wouldn't, he wouldn't even try. It's a good product, period. Watch the interview I did with him where I get on his nerves about stuff. Uh, it's coming tomorrow. Thank you, uh, Stephen, for sending this. Uh, thanks, Jürgen, for actually bringing this over. The distributor himself dropped this off. Um, and we're going to put links below and animals at the end. Someday, Father, have I lost? 